the crypto gaming narrative is heating back up again and specifically narratives in the mobile sector. And I have the pleasure of being joined by one of the absolute best gaming studios and developers in the space so far that have shipped successful mobile products in both Web2 and Web3 gaming. I will be joined by the co-founder of Goat Gaming today, one of my absolute top I've been saying on these shows every time, guys, that you need to be farming this. You need to be playing these games. I'm joined by Simon from Goat Gaming today. We're going to jump into everything involving this ecosystem, their background developing Web 2, Web 3 games, as well as their mission moving forward for the Goat token. So I'm super stoked for this one. As always, let's go ahead and jump into it. Without further ado, let's get in the game. And as usual, you know, first things first, drop down, like the video down below and subscribe to the channel. We're pushing for 100,000 subscribers here on the channel. Help us out, subscribe down below and shoot a like and leave your comments down below on Goat Gaming and everything that we talk about in this video. And a quick shout out to our sponsors, of course, here on In The Game. We have Ultra, Dreams Quest, NordVPN, Moon Tropica, Real Fever and Vulcan Forge. So links in the description for all of our sponsors. But Without further ado, let's bring on the man himself, Simon, the co-founder of Goat Gaming. Simon, how are you? Great. How are you doing, man? Nice to be on here. Yeah, not too bad. Uh, I'm glad we could line this up. I think you guys are doing some really exciting things in the space and uh, definitely worth a convo and, and, and getting the word out there. Thank you, man. Yeah, excited to share more. We've been working on this really, if you think far back enough, for seven years. So it's good to be getting to this stage. Yeah. I think uh, that's a perfect segue. Uh, just introduce yourself um, a, as well as your background in gaming. And then also maybe in like a quick elevator pitch, a quick TLDR on what is goat gaming. Oh, sure, yeah. So look, I'm Simon. I've been making games since 2004. So uh, I'm so old that the first game I ever released was on the PS2. It was a Harry Potter game. That's impressive. Yeah. Uh, so I worked on a bunch of console stuff down the years, ended up moving to online gaming and free to play kind of where i felt more exciting uh last kind of serious job i had was working at king which is a company that makes candy crush i left there in 2016 and i founded mighty bear with you know some of the best people i knew uh and so in the last seven years we shipped six games so we shipped very quickly the first game we ever shipped was an mmorpg we built that with nine people in a year and a half i had hair when we started that so tip to everyone i don't recommend making mmos if you want to keep your hairline uh, but one of the cool things about building that project is that we ended up building out a load of tech so that we could run an MMO at scale. Um, and we've been iterating on that for a number of years. And that's really at the core of a lot of what we do with, with Go Gaming. So I've been into crypto since I think about 2015. 2021, I could see everything that was happening really with Axie and Web3 more generally because we're based in Singapore. And so Southeast Asia is on our doorstep, right? We could see what's happening yeah. in the Philippines, Vietnam. Um, and so we had this vision for this like ecosystem of games that are all interconnected. Um, we come obviously from, from AAA and, and mobile free to play. And so the very first game we made was Mighty Action Heroes. And we had like a eureka moment with that game where we released this mode called 1v1 Showdown. Uh, you can check it out today. And in 1v1 Showdown, you go head to head with another player. Both of you pay a small entry fee and then there's a like a roulette wheel that determines what prize you'll get. And it's anything from like 1.3 X what you paid into 10 X. So players really love that. The perception to that was so strong. It was like, why don't we just build out an ecosystem of hundreds of these games with different skills and different ways to compete where players can go head to head and play, compete and win prizes. So the vision basically is to build I don't know if you guys remember mini clip, but it was a portal with hundreds of games like congregate or new grounds, but like the mini clip of web three with, with hundreds of games all on one platform and uh, primarily on telegram and browser. Yeah. Now the, the, the experience speaks for itself. And I, I think you guys are doing some awesome stuff as far as like your past games that you've built as well as mighty action heroes. What are some of like the active players revenue partnerships in yeah. the past that you've you know kind of worked on yeah sure so we were you know like i mentioned we've shipped i think six games in the last seven years and two of those were actually with apple so we were one of the first developers on apple arcade we made a game called butter royale butter is in the food 
and it was like a battle royale with with food and so you hit people with baguettes there's a tsunami of butter coming in you can pick up a sausage cannon you know the main npc is called caesar salads uh that game did actually very well for us it was one of the top performers in arcade um won quite a few awards uh we made a game with disney which is still on the app store it's called disney melee mania it's like a league of legends type moba uh, with i think 20 different disney pixar characters as well um yeah and on top of that you know the studio's done also partnerships outside of that so we just did a partnership with razor so there's a razor map on fortnite a competitive esports type experience we built that we have a uefm team but i think the studio to date has done over 26 million in revenue and we've had over a uh, hundred million minutes played not matches as well so across our different games so that's pretty exciting yeah that's impressive for sure and i mean mighty action heroes has been a big success as far as i know I, it won web3 mobile game of the year yeah. was that last year um what are yeah. some of the blades and the and the numbers behind mighty action heroes because personally speaking uh, as far as fun mobile experiences in the space i think mighty action heroes to me is near the top of the list Thank you. That's very kind of you. Um, yeah, we were the first Web3 game to be featured by Apple globally, which is a real achievement. Yeah, the team worked very hard to create an experience that was true to Web3 and had prizes and NFTs and you know uh, an economy which, which will be tokenized. Um, and to still do it in a way where Apple was okay with what we were building. It, the game, is, I think last time I checked, it had about 320,000 installs as well. And we've spent $0 on user acquisition. That's all organic. So there's never been one paid ad or one paid kind of advertorial for Mighty Action Heroes. Uh, and it continues to grow day after day. So I'm very proud of the work the team has done there. Yeah, uh, It sure. could end up being our biggest game. Definitely. I mean, I think it's been a, a, a big success to this point. Before we continue with the GOAT gaming ecosystem, I just have to ask, I love asking this question to everyone that oh. comes on the show, is with Web3 Gaming, what made you switch from Web2 to Web3 Gaming? As well as, yeah. do you think that Web3 Gaming will forever be just this small sector of gaming or do you see web three maybe a decade down the line being a part of every gaming experience that you come across oh well uh the answer to that is neither and i'll explain why in a second but yeah i guess the first question so i think with web three it was push and pull so i think like i mentioned previously i've been into crypto since 2015 and so i've been in and around what's happening in web three kind of throughout you know there were Abel, who's the product manager on Mighty Action Heroes, was buying and trading crypto kitties in 2018, as was Khaled, who's also you know one of the original team members. And so we have someone else on the team that's mining Ethereum. So we were all pretty deep into the space, but we've been experimenting. And it, as far back as 2018, we were talking about making what was then called a blockchain game, but we just couldn't find a design that we found compelling enough. And yeah, like I mentioned, we saw what's happening with Axie. We could see the excitement in Southeast Asia. And I think I've mentioned this in a couple of other interviews, but Gabby from YGG and I go back even back to 2010. Like we were both building a web two at the same time when we knew each other. And I could see what he was up to. And I was like, maybe there's something real. And when people you know and you respect are building in the space and really evangelizing, it makes you take it more seriously. And so I think I was attracted to it from that perspective. But then we also had an issue where I don't know if some of your other guests have spoken about this, but Apple made some pretty big changes to how device tracking works in 2021. And without going into the technical details, basically it meant that our cost of advertising on mobile games went up seven, eight times overnight. So I was spending $3 per install for a game that's performing really well and we thought could end up becoming a billion dollar IP for the studio. And then that $3 per user ended up becoming $21 per user, like pretty much from one month to the next. I was like, okay, this game is not going to scale. And so we had to rethink whether we wanted to work in the, tr the traditional kind of Web 2 paradigm. And so I think we were fortunate that the studio had enough of a grounding Web 3 that we felt comfortable just being able to make that switch kind of wholesale, move onto a new platform. And there's always great opportunity when new platforms, new business models evolve. So for me, it was a really exciting challenge to take on. Um, as to your second question, like, I think that it's going to be a bit like free to play and microtransactions. So, you know, not every game has microtransactions, but the bulk of games will have some kind of element, which is on chain, some kind of asset or collectible that players can 
hold in their wallet, which is almost like a you know proof of person or a digital identity that they control. Um, but it, it won't make sense for every game, and that's okay because you, you know you still get these you know indie games that don't have any sort of transactions in them or whatever else, and that's fine. Yeah. No, that's a good point. And microtransactions started off and people hated it, just like people hate Web3 yeah. gaming, right? Yeah. And I was one of them, you know, like, I, I don't know how old your audience is, but I remember when in Elder Scrolls, they released this cosmetic horse armor. You could buy armor for your horse and it was like $3 and the internet lost its mind. Like people went into meltdown at how this was an outrage that you could spend $3 on this item that had no functional use. And today it's just like, pfft, whatever, man. Like, no one, you know, you had three dollar cosmetic items, like, people won't even blink. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, I think it just takes time. Growing up, uh, I, I was coming up in the Halo 3, Call of Duty 4 era, and you had to buy the new map packs and you had to buy yeah. this or this. And, you know, I'm sure my parents hated me at the time because I was, you know, in <laughs> late, late elementary, early middle school, and I'm asking for their yeah. credit card or whatever to buy these things. And now, you know, back then it was a little bit like of a shock factor, like, oh, you have to buy things within the game that we already yeah. bought. But now it's it's common practice. And I feel like Web3 could definitely get there. But I, I, I can't foresee games like Fortnite changing their business model to go to Web3. So I feel like it's definitely like a, a fine line, right? I, I could see it happening if they can enforce royalties because then the business case becomes much clearer, right? Yeah, but if it's a case of them like selling a virtual good, and then you own it forever, and they don't control it anymore, like that's a difficult sell to these like large multinationals. Because right now they can nerf or remove your items or do what they want, right? Right. Whereas well, I think that's the problem with the monetization of items. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's an interesting challenge, but I think eventually the weight of pressure will tell. And I, you know, I think... I'm sticking my neck out here, but I wouldn't be surprised to see EA start try it with their sports franchise. Uh, absolutely their ultimate team where you buy the card yeah. packs and you open the cards so for me i see the opportunity like you just said the second hand revenue that they can make off of it they sell yeah. it one time to you but that's the only transaction touch point that they have with their customers whereas these types of things if they had secondhand sales and they're making royalties off of it it could become an entertaining offer to say the least yeah no, I'm with you on that. And I guess that's what, you know, I'm very passionate about royalties. And so this is one of the reasons it's so important as well, is it provides a justification for building in the space. For sure. Um, well, let's jump into Goat Gaming. When did you guys found the core, like, studio from Goat Gaming? Can you describe, like, the vision that you guys have over the next few years in Web3 Gaming as far as Goat Gaming goes? Yeah, so Goat came out of, you know, that 1v1 game mode of Mighty Action Heroes, and we realized that there was a real, that was product market fit in Web3. It was a degree of competition with people also winning prizes against each other. And I guess, you know, Web3 naturally lends itself to a, a degree of speculation, you could say. I mean, that yeah. is something that works very well in the space. And people are always very competitive. Like, you could argue that crypto is PvP finance. And so, like, just given how strongly that resonated, we're like, okay, there's something which very... Uh, appealing here and also it's really cool because we can build these telegram games in about three or four weeks like as a studio we're super fast so for context we have a uefn team and whereas most teams spend two to three months per fortnite map we can churn out a uefn map in a week this is why if you look at our page we've done i think 27 or 28 and so with telegram it's like we can do a new game every three to four weeks and just keep churning them out and try you know 50 different game designs in a year which is incredible and that allows us to find different formulas and then really double down on the ones that work it also means you can really genuinely create content for everyone so we just released a game called waifu clash this week uh, i don't have a chance to play it but it's a waifu themed pvp dice battler uh, or card battler um and it's really fun and you know the next game we have coming has got more of a racing theme and we'll be adding shooters to the mix and all kinds of different games. And I'm really excited to create a platform with a bunch of experiences that can really cater to everyone. Yeah, I haven't played the new Waifu Clash. I saw you guys tweet about it like yesterday or the day before. So I yeah. do need to jump in and give that a shot. Um, you mentioned involved. something interesting with the uh, the Telegram narrative. Are you, are you leaning into the Telegram narrative? What do you think about that side of... Uh, web three gaming and like the onboarding factor that it could yeah. have 
you know, I'm going to show my age here, but it's like the most obvious opportunity that I've seen in gaming Absolutely. since Facebook gaming in 2008. You have 900 million monthly active users with nothing to do but to send each other messages and pictures, which, you know, can be entertaining, but there's not really a lot else to do there. And so I think if you can create these players are already sticky, right? They're coming back to Telegram maybe 20, 30 times a day to check messages or whatever. If you can create a compelling experience that come, keeps them coming back, uh, the sky's the limit. And then these platforms already have a wallet built in, right? If you're a Telegram user outside the US, you have a crypto wallet you can have access to. Plus, you can monetize using the stars via the app store. So um, we think it's potentially the next kind of massive distribution channel in the same way that Google play in the app store well or Facebook gaming back in the day. And I think the next thing to remember is it's inherently social, but yeah. it's a social network. So you can quite easily scale up games that people can create little rooms with 20, 30 of their buddies as well. And you've removed all that friction. So I'm super excited by it. And I think we've said this before, but it's going to be the lead platform for good gaming. So mighty action heroes is not on telegram and I don't know if it ever will be. But all our future games will definitely be on Telegram for the GOAT platform. Uh, only exception on might, that, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, like, it's really fun. I was going to say, only exception might be if we do, like, a, you know, a partnership in Fortnite. But anything else is, like, I think over 95% of the content will be Telegram first going forward for us. Yeah, I'm super bullish on, like, Telegram, Ton, whatever you want to term it as. Uh, that narrative of gaming, I just think, like you said, it's so obvious. And even so... If, if your Telegram experiences aren't the main thing, you could gateway them into your main experiences and your ecosystem yeah. through Telegram, which is just as valuable, right? So I think games and, and ecosystems that are leaning into that are going to win big time long term. Yeah, I agree. And that's actually one of the things we're looking at. So we haven't announced any yet, but we are in discussions with a bunch of like household name IPs without helping them come to Telegram so that they can then direct maybe the users they onboard through Telegram to other platforms or giving their existing users just another touch point. And so to your point, I think that's exactly how yeah, a lot the of gateway. people... It's also valid because you like, look, creating a game in three to four weeks is a lot less effort than creating a whole other experience to onboard them. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so Waifu Clash, you mentioned the game style. I think the audience here is familiar with Mighty Action Heroes. What is Waifu Tycoon? What is the game style there? Uh, that was a Fortnite experience we built really as a test. Um, okay. And so the way that works is that we have a bunch of challenges in Go, and if you go and engage with that game, we can you can qualify for more prizes. But the objective of Waifu Tycoon is that you have to make friends with a bunch of different waifus and go on picnics with them. And so we just did it as a test, really, and it ended up becoming the Waifu Tycoon series ended up becoming one of the best performing games on Fortnite which was a, a bit of a surprise to me. Like we, again, like we make these games in a week. So uh, it was a really pleasant surprise. Yeah. Well, it's funny. There's a couple other games out there with waifu anime style that lean yeah. into that, like the, a little bit of the social aspect almost within the game. Um, yeah. And I heard the user retention is really good. Were y'all's retention stats on this? Like pretty solid. Yeah, I mean, the other thing is that every time you update these games, and you know, you can make updates very quickly. Like players will come back as well. Also, like they're very streamable, um, which yeah. we like. So, one of the things we, we're talking about doing is that we will probably use Fortnite really as an onboarding channel to Telegram as well, because there's 400 million monthly active users uh, across different platforms that engage with Fortnite. And it's maybe a way to bring new folks to Web3. And if you say, okay, you play this map in Fortnite, go to Goat Gaming and redeem this code for a chance to win an iPad or a PS5, because these people don't don't value tokens, right? Yeah. Um, and even if you only convert two or three percent of them, we've had over a million unique players on our Fortnite maps. That's a lot of pe new people coming to Web3. Yeah, it's a lot of exposure into the ecosystem, and that leads into the road to Goat. I mean, it's it's. To me, like I said, I think it's one of the best opportunities in gaming right now to jump into. So obviously the GOAT token is on the way. What are some of the things that you can do to maybe start preparing as a user on the road to GOAT? Yeah, um, you know, visit GOAT Gaming, start getting involved. 
Uh, there's a bunch of social social challenges you can do while you start learning about the ecosystem. We we value and reward anyone that contributes to the platform. So we almost think of it almost like a a way of rewarding people that assist us with publishing. You could almost call it a publisher token model, right? Uh, and then in addition to that, you know, if you start playing Mighty Action Heroes and engaging, you can make progress there. Go and check out Waifu Tycoon Three on Fortnite via our platform. Um, and the telegram experiences start next week like we are we're coming fast so we decided on this in go gaming in march and by june it was live but like it's a team that ships fast and ships consistently and so there's a lot more content coming for road to go to awesome yeah and so you can jump in you can play some of the ecosystem games are there like social quests that type of thing yeah. you can start acquiring points that go eventually towards your goat airdrop at that point in time yeah correct so if you engage with the platform then you'll qualify for being part of the uh the goat token release and you know getting some of those benefits as well and you know we, we do it we're structuring in such a way where the rewards will be meaningful you know it's not going to be like you grind for months and months and then you get some very meager reward that doesn't value your time yeah, it's a great segue too, because I was going to ask you, what do you think about the current meta that has been out there right now with the play to airdrop? I feel like yeah. your ecosystem, the way that I would term it, is y'all are coming in with a user base with Mighty Action yeah. Heroes, already proof of concept there. Whereas a lot of these play to airdrop campaigns that we see now, it's almost a user pump and dump because the users come through yeah. the door because they want the token. And then when that's over with the user numbers drop off, but y'all have kind of reverse engineered it and you already have the user base. So what do you think about the current play to airdrop meta? Oh, I think, you know, like, like we were saying earlier, mighty action heroes has had over 300,000 users already before we yeah. even start thinking or having any sort of token live. And some of these players have been with us for more than a year. Uh, so yeah, it's an audience coming in. Um, they're really keen for what we have. And I think the difference is that we're shipping new games every two to three weeks right now, which is why I look so tired. Um, like we, you know, a lot of these games, the play to airdrop is really basic. It's really rudimentary. Like you're expected to do play to airdrop for six to seven weeks with like one game mode or whatever. Yeah. I think for us, it's an opportunity to showcase what we can do and kind of variety of experiences. I think, the current meta is just a bit broken because it's not very fun. You know, people just farming cash tags or playing the same section over and over again. And then it becomes more like a job. And so I want to create something which is rewarding and keeps players on their toes by offering a new experience every few weeks. Yeah, I'm with you there. I think that the the space that definitely lacks fun and these play to airdrops are very repetitive. So I I'm on board with you there. And then how about like the tokenomics side? So like, I feel like a lot of projects go to market and they don't have the value prop laid out for their token. Yeah. What is GOAT going to be used for in, in the ecosystem? And, and how do you see GOAT kind of working into the crypto gaming landscape? Yeah, GOAT has a few uses, So, which, which is important. And the first is that it's, you know, the primary means for players to engage with the ecosystem. So use goat token you buy uh, off-chain currency let's call it credits and players use that off-chain currency to enter competitions and enter showdown modes and pay for 1v1 competition and have a chance to win prizes and then you know if you accumulate lots of credits because you keep winning or whatever then you'll be able to cash out back to goat so it's a way to you know cash in and out with the different the ecosystem and have one token that kind of oversees uh, everything we're doing there in addition to that, we will be launching a B2B component. So we haven't spoken about this too much publicly, but we've actually onboarded, well, you could say three external studios to go. We're already co-developing with three other studios and we give them access to our tooling that we've been building for seven years. I think over time, we'll be making that tooling more publicly accessible. And almost like with AWS credits, people will pay uh to use the services with a goat token as well which is really cool because the reason we can build games in three weeks is because of the tooling and the ai pipeline we've built and so we could charge other people to do that and they will have to use goat i think the third component here is that we are going to offer locking for goat so goat, you know it's uh locking, sorry there's a siren going on the side and if you can hear that 
they're, they're, they're coming to the road to go. They're on the road to go. Yeah, the road to go. Yeah, they've gone past. The players can lock their tokens and in exchange for locking their tokens, they'll get rewards. And the rewards are based on ecosystem activities. So, you know, to be clear, it's not rev share, but say that there's a thousand matches played today. We can be like, okay, well, a thousand matches means that this many tokens will go back to people locking and a million signups this month. And so that way we incentivize the community to also build out with us. Uh, I think it's a really nice alignment and a really nice way of offering rewards to people that lock. Yeah, for sure. And uh, it seems like there's some sort of a supply reduction mechanism here based on the, the tweet. So it seems like some of the things inside of these different games and experiences or with the, the NFTs, it seems like there's something that takes supply out of circulation as well. Yeah, I'm not going to go too deep into that, but that is something that, that we're working on. We're already reducing the supply of the NFTs like, like you're showing here. So we have the GOAT Genesis Pass coming. Uh, if you hold a big bear syndicate or a mighty net genesis pass you'll be able to exchange mighty net genesis is just one to one i think big bear syndicate for every six bears you'll be able to qualify for one go and if you have any left over so you only have five then those five are entered into like a raffle and you have a chance to, to win a good pfp as well yeah no that's awesome and then obviously with the telegram stuff around the corner that makes me super happy i'm betting big on like the ton ecosystem and and ecosystems that are also leaning into the telegram side of things so that checks a box for me any other upcoming catalyst announcements through the ecosystem that you could hint at because we love alpha around here yeah everyone loves alpha um <laughs> yeah we 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 have i can't say what it is we have a very, very big announcement coming in the next 10 days. A major okay. strategic partner we're going to be tying up with. And I think it's going to heat up a lot after we make that announcement. So it's still early, guys. But uh, <laughs> yeah, watch this space. Yeah, I hope that they remember who got them in early. We've been covering GOAT. We got Simon yeah. on right now giving you guys all the alpha. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm just super stoked. I think that y'all have one of the, like I mentioned earlier, a lot of proof of concept backing this. A lot of people come to Web3 Gaming, they boast a good background, but they also haven't done it yet in Web3. And it's a different ball game, whereas Mighty Action Heroes is already a proven success. And I just think the ecosystem speaks for itself. It seems like you guys have the roadmap and, and the, the plans. Y'all are leaning into the right narratives as well to kind of make this thing a, a massive success. So I couldn't be more bullish on what y'all are building. Cool. Thank you for that. We're, we're delighted to have you on the journey as well. Goat yeah. recognize goat. Yeah, goats recognize goats. That's right. Well, Simon, is there anything I didn't cover? Anything you want to mention? Um, and if not, where can people follow you? Where can they find you? We'll drop your links in the description down below as well. But uh, anything that we didn't mention that you wanted to cover? No, you know, I, I think we've covered the important points. You know, we spoke about the road to go. I think the fact that we have a pretty unique pipeline and how we develop games so we can ship games quickly. Uh, and the fact that the Go platform is a place for players to play, compete and win prizes. And so I think, you know, the, the bulk of it's done. So yeah, if you want to follow us, give us a follow at Play Goat Gaming on X. And you can follow me and my, my handle is at skill level seven and the seven is a number, skill level one word. But yeah, but yeah Play Goat Gaming for the, for the platform. And yeah, we really look forward to, to welcoming more players into the space and having a chance to compete. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Simon, I appreciate it. Links are down below in the description to link into Goat Gaming, get started farming, and get started engaging in the ecosystem. You guys would, I can guarantee you, this is going to be worth the time to jump into this ecosystem and, and, and just prepare for everything around the corner, as well as Simon's link down below. Um, I know you're jet lagged, my friend. I know we're recording late here at night for me. So it's an honor yeah. to have you on the show. And I uh, just pleasure. can't wait to see how this ecosystem develops. And we'll continue bringing the alpha to the audience as GOAT comes to market as far as the token. Yeah, I look forward to it. And uh, it's a real privilege to be, be on your show and, and be able to speak to your fantastic community as well. And thank you to everyone that, that took the time to tune in. Yeah, we appreciate your time. As you mentioned, um, you know, y'all are busy on that side, to say the least. So I know time is of the essence. You guys like the video, subscribe down below and hit the links in the description. Hit the road to goat. Like I said, I've been giving you guys this alpha, but I hope Simon's words 
hearing it straight from the horse himself, I think you guys should be jumping in down below. So we'll see y'all on the next one. Simon, I appreciate your time. And um, until next time, like the video, subscribe, and we'll see y'all later. As always, play well, my friends. See you later.